Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about K nearest neighbors, which is one of the simplest machine learning algorithm that you can use. I generally prefer to use KNN as my first algorithm of choice, either for classification or regression. It gives you a very intuitive, very simple sense of, of the data of the classification of the regression if you can at least visualize the data and see what is happening. Let's talk about the idea. Let's talk about the intuition. Let's say that if you want to do a classification task and we want to classify between oranges and apples and we are given two features on the basis of which we need to classify. One is the radius of the fruit and the other is the amount of redness. So we have just arbitrarily scaled them from on some units on the radius dimension and some units on the redness dimension. And the idea is that you would of course expect apples to be generally more red compared to the oranges and let's say the there are some specific difference in the radius size that also exist. Now the intuition of KN is as simple as this that if you were to pick a point here, a fruit here, you know, which is in the vicinity in this geometric space if you see it's in this coordinate space if you see this point is in the vicinity of other oranges so how would you expect what would you expect this point to be an apple or an orange you would expect it to be an orange given that you would expect oranges to be similar in the set of features that are used to describe them so that's essentially the idea of k nearest neighbor that you assign the classification or the class based on the proximity to other samples of from the train data now this was for the case of classification but the same thing also holds true for regression let's say if you are trying to predict the price of a house and you have two features the area of the home and the age of the home and this is a bubble chart so the size of the bubble is the indicative of the price and if you were to pick up a test home around this you would expect to be pricey because you see that nearby homes in this geometric in this coordinate space are expensive so basically this is suggesting in some sense that homes which are have a higher area and are relatively new are going to be expensive so here also we just make a prediction based on the nearby homes where the term nearby is defined in terms of the features that you've chosen here there are area and the age of the home so let's before we talk about k nearest neighbors and what exactly k means let's talk about one nearest neighbor which is the simplest form of k nearest neighbor and we'll be performing this uh, one nearest neighbor classification on this trivial data set which contains only two points and two features so we want to learn a classifier for this and we want to be predicting on any test point let's say in this space so the intuition that you already would have is exactly what we are going to do here is by creating a Voronoi diagram so we take a look at these two points we draw a line joining these two points we would then look at the midpoint of the line joining these two points and draw a line perpendicular to the line joining these two points. Now this line becomes a classification boundary. Anything on this side of this particular line will be the blue class and anything on the this particular side of the classification boundary would be assigned the red class. So that's mostly it to if you want to understand one nearest neighbor you follow this procedure. You join the points, you draw the perpendicular to the line joining the points at the midpoint and then you assign the class based on, on which side of this particular classification boundary do these points lie. So if you were to predict any point here it would be red because what it is suggesting is that any point on this side of the classification boundary would be closer to this train point and any point lying on this particular side of this classification boundary would be closer to this blue point that's why you join the line and that is why you drew perpendicular at the midpoint 
and at the midpoint you could arbitrarily decide between any of the two classes okay let's now apply the same intuition when we have more points so we have three red points p1 p2 p3 and three blue points p4 p5 and p6 so even without me drawing anything should just pause the video and draw in your notebooks what do you think would be the classification boundary for one nearest neighbor the intuition here again as we just spoke about a minute ago is that any test point you're trying to see that what is the closest train point and then for that particular test point you assign that particular closest train points class to be the predicted class right so we follow the same procedure as we did before but now since there are more examples this is slightly more complicated than the previous example so you first start with p1 and p4 so you use, you're trying to make predictions in let's say all of this region because these two points are now the closest to all the points in this region right? so you look at p1 and p4 you draw a line joining these two points you find the midpoint which is a and you make a perpendicular to this line passing through a so what you've in essence said that any point on this particular side of the line will be blue on any point on this particular side of the line will be red but there is a caveat we just don't have these only p1 and p4 but there are other points also like if you were to just continue this line it would be passing like this but which does not make sense because you you would have like so if you were to just extrapolate this line then you have predicted anything below this line to be red so p5 and p6 would have been predicted to be red clearly something wrong because we have missed the fact that as you keep on going beyond this point then there are other points other train points which become closer to this line so any particular point in this space let's say in this space is much closer to p5 and p3 than it is closer to p4 and p1 so thus the the we need to make some changes as we go ahead so we reach if we keep continuing on this line we reach this point b now p becomes closer to p3 in comparison to p1 so if p becomes closer to p3 so then we should no longer be looking at p1 as the closest point uh, closest red point to any point going in this direction so then what you'll do is to then consider p3 and p4 so this is still assuming that b is closer to p4 compared to p5 so the midpoint between p3 and p4 is b you draw a line joining these two you draw a perpendicular and you'll get something like this you'll get a line like this but again if you were to draw a line if you just continue this line in this fashion all you're saying is that uh, all of the region below this curve would be red but that is again incorrect so that again means that we need to then again see for all the other points in this space but what are the two closest points of the competing classes and if you keep on extending this analogy so then you look at p3 and p5 and then you join the points you draw the midpoint between uh, draw the midpoint and then draw a line passing through the midpoint perpendicular to the line joining them and then you extend it it will intersect the earlier line between p3 and p4 at this point and again there will be a change in this curve when you draw the line between p2 and p6 so essentially what this decision boundary is is a piecewise linear function so that's something you need to remember while you are drawing one in classification it's at all the points it was linear but the same line does not continue so it's piecewise linear so this is piece one this is piece two piece three and piece four now let's extend this logic to a slightly more interesting classification boundary that will exist now we have the red points as a outer circle and the blue points as an inner circle now interestingly while you might think that 
the classification boundary would be a circle it is not a circle it would still be a piecewise linear but since but there will be so many piecewise linear components and their lengths will be so small that it will look fairly similar to a circle okay so far so good about the case of case of classification now let's think about the case of regression sorry before going on to regression we have thus far talked about k equal to 1 or 1 nn classification where if you were to solve the or you were to draw the decision boundary for 1 nn classification for this particular data you'd see that it would look something like the following so any point above this line would be given as the red class but there seems to be one red point here so then again you look at the midpoints between these two between this blue and this red and between this blue and this red and you draw lines perpendicular and then you see where they intersect so any point in this particular region would be predicted red any point in this region would be predicted red so finally the classification boundary would look something like the following which clearly looks a little weird because it looks a little odd it could very well be the case that this is one slightly you know, erroneous point or a noisy point. So in SVMs, we had a very nice way to handle this where we allowed some slack from the margin. Here, that, here the way to handle such sort of noise or some amount of very specific data points and not making the model more sort of complex is to increase the number of neighbors that you consider for a point. So in this case, I'll be doing a K equal to three classification, which means that my predicted label is the label of the closest three training points, right? So if we were to look a point over here, let's say, the closest three training points would be this red point, this red point, and this blue point. And if you do a majority vote between them or you look at the mode, you'll then predict it to be red. If you look at a point over here, the closest three points would be this or a point over here, test point over here. The closest three neighbors or three points would be this uh, shown in this dash lines, one red and two blue points. And again, if you do the majority vote, you will say that this test point is blue, which now seems more sort of refined or seems like a better classification boundary. So this is the classification boundary that we'll end up learning for k equal to 3 classification. So as you see, if we go from k equal to 1 to k equal to 3, the classification becomes more smoothened. Very soon, we'll see the bias variance trade off once we vary k but i guess if you could just stop the video and think about it you already know the answer you could already work out the answer that how the bias variance trade-off exists for knn with respect to the parameter k neighbors now coming on to the case of regression so we look at y versus x we have three points x1 y1 x2 y2 and x3 y3 and if you we were just doing a simple linear regression we would just draw a line which which leads to certain properties which we have seen which minimizes the sum of squared errors for one nearest regression one nearest neighbor regression we solve it in a very interesting fashion so the the, the prediction is sort of interesting for all points whose x is less than x1 for all those points the closest strain point would be x1 y1 right so for x less than x1 the nearest neighbor is x1 comma y1 and the prediction is the prediction of y1 since we're just looking at one nearest neighbor if we were doing two nearest neighbor we could have done the prediction as the mean of the y values of the two closest uh, nearest neighbors but if x is less than x1 plus x2 by 2 still the closest point is going to be x1 only so even if x is less than x1 plus x2 by 2, the nearest neighbor is still x1 comma y1. Only after you move to this point, which is x is greater than x1 plus x2 by 2, does the closest point become x2. But that also just continues till the point we have x2 plus x3 divided by 2. And thus, if we keep on doing the same procedure for all the points, 
we'll again see this piecewise lines now parallel to the x axis so you see y equal to something y equal to y1 y2 y3 so on and so forth so that's how one nearest neighbor regression will occur now it would be interesting if you could at your own time try out doing the same thing when the train points come in from let's say a sine function and you look at some subset of the points and not all the points so you'd see kind of the level sets being drawn or kind of a quantization of the sine wave being done if you've done any amount of digital signal processing you'll immediately realize that what this thing looks similar to i won't say out the answer now now we come to an interesting discussion so knn is known as something known as a non parametric algorithm so whenever we hear, hear the word non parametric it can sort of confuse us does non parametric means that these models have no parameters that is incorrect so the meaning is that they can potentially have infinite parameters and the parameters can grow with the size of the data set so let's just have a quick understanding of what non parametric means to aid our understanding we'll be looking at a linear model for classification so let's say you have these two points and if you learn a linear model let's say it is logistic regression so you learn an equation of a line which separates out these two classes the equation of the line would be something like y equal to mx plus c which will be having two parameters right now let's do the same thing for knn for k equal to 1 if we look at the decision boundary here it looks like a line it is indeed a line since you have only two points and since it is piecewise linear and you have a single piece the decision boundary is a line with two parameters m and c but let's now add some data so if you add some data now if you have data like this and if you're still learning a linear model then the decision function might be something like this it's still a straight line and the decision boundary form formulation is still y equal to mx plus c while m and c will change but the number of parameters will remain the same but if you look at the k nearest neighbor classification you just look at the the equation of the curve let's say which is the classification boundary decision boundary sorry now this would be at least a cubic and if you keep on making this more complicated data set then this can become arbitrarily complex arbitrarily you know thousands ten thousands of dimensions so as you increase the amount of data while the linear model will still retain the number of parameters because you fix that k nearest neighbor can change the shape based on the training data so as and when the data set can become more complex or evolves it can change its functional form and thus it has it can potentially have infinite number of parameters so that's where the non-parametric picture comings to comes into play and as as we have already discussed the definition is the number of parameters can increase with respect to the increase in data set size or non-parametric and thus they can be very long they can take a long time to compute and the number of parameters are not less are large but the thing is that we generally don't make assumptions all we're trying to say is so like for kn and we all we have said is that nearby points influence you but in the case of parametric models let's say a linear model we said that the relationship between y and x is a straight line and decision trees are also non-parametric method to convince this you should convince yourself you should again try out the same trick just add or delete a few points and then you'll see that the linear model will still have two parameters but the depth of the tree will can become arbitrarily complicated that is if you have not enforced any depth on the tree so the depth of the tree can become arbitrarily complicated as and when you keep on adding more data so the functional form or the complexity the number of parameters of the model itself will change so for knn if you're wondering what is the set of the parameters so knn considers all the points so the entire training data is in some sense the set of parameters which knn has and if you're 
thinking about SVMs, is it a parametric, is it non-parametric? The answer is both yes and no. SVM with a linear kernel, polynomial kernel is parametric, but SVM with RBF kernel is non-parametric because RBF kernel, you're doing similar things there also. You're looking at the influence of a particular point on all the other points. So that's the high level intuition. And KNN is also a lazy strategy. So, so by lazy strategy, it is meant that the train time is effectively zero. You don't need to do anything while training. I mean, there is no access training step involved. You just store the entire data set. All you need to do is at test time, you see that is my test point closest to which set of train points. Thus, the testing time can be generally large, especially on larger data sets, as you have to search, sift through a lot of data. In terms of the memory requirements, it has to store and memorize the entire data. And eager are the kind of methods where you, there is a training step involved. So there is some, some parameters that you learn. Let's say in linear regression, you learn something. But the testing can probably be quicker because you don't have to search the entire set of data set to see which is the closest set of points. And you only need to search, store the learned parameters. KNN and lazy strategies, because of the fact that they require only testing, uh, they don't require any as such training, they can be extremely useful in the online settings. As in when you keep on adding some, keep on adding some new data, you don't need to change anything because the model can be easily adapted. You just make another query and now in your new query, the new set of points would also be considered. Okay, so when we talk about k nearest neighbors, there are a few questions that you, you should be answering. First, what are the features that should be considered for defining similarity? Now, generally the features could be, you know, all the set of features, you could use some sort of feature selection strategy, or you could use PCA-like strategy to project your, to obtain the most important set of features. Or you could use domain expertise to figure out the important set of features. The next question is, how do you define similarity once you've defined the features? So you need some notion of the distance between two points. Now, if you're comparing strings, the distance could be edit distance, or if you're computing uh, something else, if you're computing two points or two vector distances, the you're looking and now looking at the vector distances. So you're looking at Euclidean or Hamming distance, or so there could be various distance metrics which you could employ, and the idea is to employ them based on some, uh, you know, based on some background that you have about the problem where does this particular metric make sense or not make sense and then the question is what is the aggregation function that you will be using so once you have k nearest neighbors how do you combine their data how do you combine their y values do you take a mean of them do you take a median of them or what do you do the other question is how do you choose or what is the number of neighbors that you will be taking into consideration and as I mentioned, this involves the bias variance trade-off. Heavily involves the bias variance trade-off. And the final question is that what is the computational complexity of the algorithm that you're implementing? Are you implementing a brute force k nearest neighbor where you search for all the data points for each test point? Or can you do something smarter? So there are a lot of approximate solutions available, including KD tree or LSH based algorithms. And many of the popular implementations, including scikit-learn, provide these efficient implementations. So distance metric, as we've discussed, can tell us the measure of similarity. This is a very central piece to KNN because we started the whole thing with saying that you want, you want to be predicting based on how similar the test point is to the various train points. And we generally use the Euclidean distance, but there could be other measures of distance, like for certain metrics, for certain kinds of problems, the Hamming distance might make sense. And for some, the Manhattan distance might make sense. 
for example if you're talking about the chess moves right so you probably looking at a chess table and then you can only move in a particular kind of directions so you cannot you know arbitrarily not all the pieces can arbitrarily jump in all the directions coming to the consideration of k where k is the number of neighbors the choosing the choice can be difficult but again you have the same set of tools you do cross validation to figure out the optimum value of k the idea is that if you have a low value of k then each point has a high influence on the final output because you're only looking at one nearest neighbor and that one nearest neighbor then influences the test prediction a lot and thus this can make things difficult because noise will influence the result we should go back and look at this example so for k equal to 1 this particular point which is sort of noise influences all the points in this in this particular you know dimension or whatever exists here that's thus it's a choosing k equal to 1 will lead to it can lead to wrong classification misclassifications uh, support generalization performance in many cases but if you choose a very high value of k then you'll of course get a smoother decision boundary and definitely you lower the amount of variance because now one particular point cannot influence your model a lot you're looking at a large number of neighbors to decide the classification boundary so you could think about taking this to the extreme let's say if you're talking about a two class classification problem and one class has 70 train points the other has 30 you could choose k equal to 100 let's say or a very large number so then essentially your prediction will be the class which has the most number of samples so then your train accuracy is dropped to 70 percent so if you have poor train accuracy you mean you also mean that you have a high amount of bias but that is not going to vary now now if you vary the points change the points add or one or two points the prediction always remains the same so thus the various variance is low bias is high but if you have a low value of k the variance is very high you change one point the whole decision surface uh, and function will change but the train points will be accurately all the trains point will be 100 percent accurately classified so thus the bias is low the variance is high and we can see in this particular example also so if this is a data set there seem to be some noise here with k equal to 1 you will also get this particular region high variance if you were to have another brown point here or a yellow point here you would see some small regions surrounding that points if you increase k to 3 you have somewhat mitigated the problem but then there are some really small pieces which are some could be artifacts of the plotting also but if you have k equal to 9 then you'll only see a much more smoothened out decision surface decision boundaries and if you were to keep k equal to really large number then you'll only see the majority class all of the points would be colored according to the majority class so that's really low variance but very high bias so we've already discussed about how we could aggregate data once we have the data from the k nearest neighbor we could take a median or mean of them this is more specific to the uh, class uh, to the regression case for the classification case you could just take the mode of it or you, you could just take the majority class so to summarize the knn algorithm it's a trivial algorithm you keep the entire training data set this is a part of the lazy evaluation and for every query vector q which is a test point you find the k closest data points where k has now been let's say fixed and once you get these k closest points you just aggregate them in some sense you take the mean median mode and predict the y there are few some other considerations which are important when you're talking about the k nearest neighbor algorithm and when does it not apply the important one important thing is called the curse of dimensionality which we have discussed 
a few times before we have mentioned it in passing a few points a uh, few times before but we'll now look at it in a slightly more detailed sense the important thing is that when you're increasing the number of dimensions and you're talking about distance metrics like Euclidean there are some distance metrics which are better when you are dealing with higher dimension so specifically you could uh, look into literature which says that using the LP norm where P is a fraction between 0 and 1 is better suited for higher dimensional data sets compared to using the Euclidean metric. So the idea in the curve, so the idea in this curse of dimensionality problem is that if you increase the number of dimensions then the distance between the points will start to increase. Now what does this even mean? So this means that I should show you a notebook to explain this. So initially what I've done is to just finalize the just just set a seed to zero. I am drawing 10 points across different dimension space. So first I am drawing 10 points uniformly on this zero to one on a scale of 0 to 1 on one dimension so you see these different points and now you can look at the differences between them in the sense that if you look at this particular point it seems to be fairly close to this point and it seems to be fairly far from this point and what you see is that the, dis the ratio between the farthest point to a particular point and the closest point is huge now what I've done is to write a function which does the same thing but in a higher dimensional space. So you go now you look at a two dimensional space. So once you look at the two dimensional space the closest point let's say we pick up this point the closest point and the farthest point they are still well separated out and the distance the ratio between the farthest distance and the closest distance is still large but it's comparatively lower than if you look at the 1D case. So essentially think of you're trying to now fill up a higher dimensional space, higher dimensional volume. So you end up requiring an exponentially more number of points to maintain this distance property or you know the relationship between distances as you keep on increasing the number of dimensions. So thus this becomes extremely difficult to do because you cannot generate training data at that rate like if you go from 1d to 2d you require exponentially more number of points training points and what I've done here is to look at the main distances between all pair of points in different dimensions so using this randomly generated data and you can see that the mean distance using the Euclidean metric keeps on increasing between the different set of between all pairs of points as you increase the number of dimensions. What that further means is if we look at the ratio of the max to min distances and this is on a logarithmic scale that keeps on reducing as you increase the number of dimensions. So what this effectively means is that k nearest neighbor becomes a really poor algorithm when you look at a higher number of dimensions because there is no notion of similarity anymore left you have a distance between the farthest and the closest point which is fairly close now that's the ratio of the max to min distance with that point you would probably not want to use KNN so you should either increase the number of data points exponentially as you increase the number of dimensions or you should project your data to a lower dimensional space or use some feature selection technique And the final thing which we want to cover in nearest neighbors is that there are some approximate nearest neighbors methods which I have just briefly mentioned. They are KD trees, LSH, other algorithms. The idea is that since at test time you have to query all the possible, all train points to figure out which is the closest, it can be really time consuming. And it doesn't scale well in terms of the number of data points that we have. So the idea is that can we sacrifice some amount of accuracy but to gain some speed up and that's where you 
now trying to approximately find the nearest neighbors. LSH approximation files, greedy search, KDE trees are few techniques. There is a very beautiful video from Jeffrey Elman, which I link to in the course description, which you should watch to understand more about LSH. But I'll give you a quick 60 second overview. So the idea is that you have these set of points. In a, if you were to do a regular hash hashing or normal hash function, so there the objective is to keep the collision of points across the different bins. So these are the different bins uniform. You, you want to be more evenly distributing them. But in an LSH locality sensitive hashing, what you want to do is that the points which are similar in the input space, they are assigned to the similar bin, to the same bin. And then it becomes easier to try and understand how to figure out which bin to look at and then find the approximate set of neighbors. So I'm not going into any more details. This is purely optional, but there's an excellent lecture from Jeffrey Elman, which I'll link. So with this, I'll end the discussion on k nearest neighbors. Thank you.